Hey guys, it's Tom Box. Welcome to MST.TV. Got a ruling segment for you guys, specifically addressing the things in Salamangrate so that you guys don't get cheesed by Evil Sam right here. <laughs> I got four ruling interactions for you guys today. First of all, we're going to talk about the field spell, how the relink effect works, and how it interacts with Formute Skipper. Then we have Bailinx versus Gazelle, the proper timing in TCG, and also a misplay that you guys can all avoid. I've seen this misplay happen about 10 times, but it's something that you can avoid, and you will actually get rule sharked on this at a regionals, so I'm helping you prevent that. Third card interaction, Foxy versus Skill Drain. How does it work when Foxy's in the graveyard and Skill Drain's up on the board? So we're gonna talk about that. And does Jack Jaguar special summon out if he shuffles back into the deck an extra deck monster? We're gonna discuss all this very soon. But first I want to give a huge shout out to my most recent Patreons of course. Thank you all for supporting me. And uh, oh, for all you Patreons out there, uh, there has been your exclusive early release of Dark Neostorm Proxies. You guys get your Orcus, you guys get your Mecha Crusadia, you get your Idoli, all that is available. I'm waiting for the Witchcraft stuff coming up before I do the upgrade. So you guys have early access, go ahead and go grab your proxies. By the way guys, I do have a Twitter. It is at TomBoxCreations, that's me. I post a lot of random stuff, sometimes I throw memes out there, and sometimes I throw things that you guys might not agree with. But anyways, if you guys wanna follow me on Twitter, check out at TomBoxCreations. Creations. Appreciate that, you guys. Now, on to the rulings. First card, Salamangrate Sanctuary. So, card text. If you link summon a Salamangrate Link monster, you can use one Salamangrate Link monster you control with the same name as the entire material, bypassing the entire recipe, aka you give it a new recipe. And then during damage calculation, if a monster battles, pay a thousand life points, then target one link monster you control, make it the attack zero, and if you do gain life points equal to the original attack, blah 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 blah, you can only use each effect of Salaman Great Sanctuary once per turn. So the thing that I want to concern ourselves with is the first effect, which is the relinking effect. I'm just going to call it relink because reincarnation link is a bit of a mouthful for me. So we have this effect. So does it activate? That's the real question. And the answer is a no, it does not activate. It is a continuous like effect. So if you're going to use the effect, you just declare that you've used it. That's it. You can't ogre the card because of it. And that's what I've been seeing. People are like, oh, activate the effect. Well, I'm going to ogre it and now you can't do it. And like, it doesn't activate. It's a continuous like effect. So they get to go into it regardless. So yeah, unless you somehow negate that card effect, uh, yeah, it's going to go through. So there you go, that's the first part. The second part is actually related to Formood Skipper. So what about Formood Skipper? Now it states in the card text, during your main phase, you can reveal one Link monster in your extra deck. And if you do, when you Link summon this turn, you can treat this card as Link material with the same name, type, and attribute as the revealed monster. So what I can say is you cannot use this card as a one card link material to get the reincarnate link from the field spell because the border of this card is still not a link monster. The field spell requires that you use a Salamangrate link monster with the same name. And because your border is still orange and that monster is still blue, it doesn't count for the field spell. But can you use this card for reincarnation link? Sure you can because you can still copy the name. And if you link into a Sunlight Wolf using a Sunlight Wolf, as long as it copies the correct name, you will be able to get the Reincarnate Link Effect as long as you're using the correct recipe, the regular recipe method. So in general, the Formula Skipper is not a one card Link 2 or Link 3, but you can technically still get the Reincarnate Link Effects from the Heat Leo and the Sunlight Wolf. So Salamangrate, Bailings, and Gazelle, if they both trigger in the new chain, can you create a chain block to prevent Ash Blossom Joyous Spring? Because a lot of people have been seeing in the simulators, you can use Ash Blossom on the Bay Lynx. That applies in OCG. It's a slight difference compared to TCG because in TCG, our Segok does not care about public knowledge and we apply it as is. Whereas if something is not public knowledge, you apply them like a fast effect in OCG. So to break it down, what Segok is, simultaneous effect goes on chain. First things first, you have the mandatory triggers of the turn player, then you have the mandatory triggers of the opposing player, then you have the optional triggers of the turn player, and then you have the optional triggers of the opposing players. And those are the chains that go out first. So you apply all their effects in a stack, and then you apply quick effects after. And since Ash Blossom is a quick effect, you're not able to really use Ash Blossom on that Gazelle, so you can form the chain links because we have two optional triggers on the turn player. So we have Bailinx and Gazelle. Bailinx will be chain link one, and then you just stack on chain link two as Gazelle, and then you can do that full blockage right there. And because of that, 
Ash Blossom can't really stop the Gazelle from summoning out from hand, so nothing can really be stopped there. But in OCG, the slight difference is the moment you activate the uh, Bailinx, because the Gazelle is not public knowledge as it is in your hand, it basically goes into phase where fast effects can go off so they can ash you and then you can still activate your Gazelle because your Gazelle still met the trigger. So it's a little bit different in OCG. So that's the difference there. So if it's in TCG, yeah, you can create the chain block. Now this was kind of explained in a mega ruling thread in Reddit, so you guys can check it out. I'll leave a link down in the description below. And just remember to always follow the rules of your head judge as they get the final say on anything per event anyway. And each event is kind of like a black box on themselves. So what is the biggest misplay I've seen with Gazelle and Bailings? It's that people forget to resolve them back to back. There's two chains in there. They resolve the first chain and then they miss the second one and it will cost you your games it'll cost you your match if you forget this so here's the example i summon on any salamagra monster and then i go ahead and link it off in the bailings and i have a gazelle in hand okay so chain link one bailings chain link two gazelle gazelle special summons out bailing searches out the field spell and then the player goes ahead and activates that field spell there's the misplay right there they forgot to activate the trigger effect of the gazelle that just got summoned and therefore you forgot to ditch a card into the graveyard. And that ditch into the graveyard is your trap, it is your control, or it's your spinny so you can extend your combo. There's like so much that you miss out by forgetting that ditch. If you forget to activate it, it's too late. And the thing is, the rule shark will always win because technically, are they really rule sharking you if you go ahead and activate a card and not let you take it back? No, they're not really sharking you on anything. It's just that you forgot and you were clumsy and you've got no one really to blame but yourself if they don't let you take it back. And even the judge will rule in their favor. It's like, well, it's an optional trigger and you missed your optional trigger. Then, well, that's too bad. You don't get your dump and therefore you will set up a very mediocre board that will cost you game. So remember, here's my tip for you guys. Here's the Tom Box tip for you guys. When you're holding on to your Salamangrade Sanctuary, Point at your card. Don't drop it. Just hold onto it and point to your gazelle and be like gazelle effect. So if you're holding onto it, don't just activate it just yet. Look at the field and see if there's a gazelle that just got summoned and make sure you get that through because you're going to take a fat L if you forget this. You're like, oh my god, I bubbled up because I forgot I was tired. Just develop a habit, all right, guys? Ruling number three, a graveyard foxy versus a face-up skill drain. So the question would be, can foxy special summon itself out? And if it does special summon itself out, does it destroy, say, the face-up skill drain? And the answer to that is yes, yes to both. According to the card text right here, it states that if this card is in your graveyard and a face-up solar trap is on the field, you can discard one Salamangre card, special summon this card, then you can destroy one face-up solar trap on the field. Now, since the Foxy is on the field, why can't it destroy the uh, face-up skill drain? And the answer is quite simple. And it's a very basic mechanic in Yu-Gi-Oh! is that the effects of cards always activate and resolve in this exact same place. The location of the card does not have anything to do with where the effect resolves. So since this card activated in the graveyard, when it resolves, it's resolving in the graveyard and skill drain only negates the stuff that are on the field face up. And since it does not affect the graveyard, it gets to pop it. Remember, the location of the card does not have anything to do with where it resolves. As such, to give you a better example, like effect failure negating, say, a Lone Fire Blossom. The Lone Fire Blossom technically removes itself from the field, but since when it was already on the field and then when it activates it's activating on the field when it's negated and it's resolving while it's still negated and same goes with like shadow imprisoning mirror with say a destiny hero malicious which banishes itself when it activates it banishes itself when it activates but it's still activated in the graveyard shadow imprisoning mirror will negate all the effects of cards that activate in the graveyard so yeah you don't get their effect either there are certain cards where it does matter where it resolves like zombie master but those cards will specifically state that it needs to stay in the exact same position to resolve okay so there you have it guys uh, if you summon a foxy out of the graveyard and there's a skill drain on the field you can pop it because you're activating from the graveyard and resolving from the graveyard all right ruling number four salamangre jack jaguar i want to give a huge shout out to the ruling zone for clarifying various things on the card text specifically it was a very technical question and they answered it really well if you guys got ruling questions go check out the ruling zone discord they've got an awesome panel of experts 
available to answer your questions. Now, let's talk about what we're talking about here. So according to the card text of Jack Jaguar, it states that if you control a Salamangre Link monster while this card is in your graveyard, you can target one Salamangre monster in your graveyard except for Jack Jaguar, shuffle that target into the deck, and if you do, that's the conjunction, Special summon this card to your zone, your Salamangre Link monster points to, so you have to control the monster. So what I'm really talking about in terms of what I want to address is the shuffle that target into the deck. According to some of the comments I have received, um, players have been arguing with judges and judges and whatever. They had an argument where they can't summon out the Jack Jaguar because he returned a monster into the extra deck. And that sounds like a bit of baloney to me, just saying, because you should technically be able to satisfy the conjunction if you were to shuffle return a card into the deck. Returning something to the extra deck should just as well satisfy it. And if they're arguing that you can't, like, say, shuffle the extra deck or the deck was not shuffled, well, you technically can shuffle your extra deck to meet that condition. There are cards that require you to shuffle your extra deck, sign at Storm. So there's nothing preventing you from shuffling your extra deck, for one thing. And uh, by any means, even if you shuffle the extra deck, it makes no difference to you because you always have access to your extra deck knowledge. You always know what's available. You can always check it. You can fan it out and look at it yourself. So even if you have to shuffle your extra deck, it does not really matter, especially the face down cards of your extra deck. How I would personally rule this and how a lot of other judges would rule it is that if you return an extra deck monster through Jack Jaguar, you are able to special summon out Jack Jaguar onto a link pointer that is a Salamangri monster you control points to, okay? So, hopefully that clears the air. And uh, if anyone argues otherwise, I'm sorry, you'll have to deal with your head judge. And if your head judge says no, then remember, each event is a black box, so. It's an isolated case, and I feel bad for those who got screwed over. That is all. Anyways, if you guys enjoyed this segment, hit me up with a thumbs up. Hit me up with a subscribe. I've got more how to beat content. I'm working on some live duel stuff. I've got tons of things coming up. So hit that subscribe. Just hit the notification bell. Stay tuned. Hit me a like. And hopefully you guys don't get screwed over at your next event. That is all, guys. If anything, don't forget to hold on to your MST.TV and I'll see you guys in the next one. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you like this video, please drop us a like so we know we are doing a good job. And you can also subscribe to MST.TV for more fantastic videos by clicking on the button on the left. Don't forget to check out our partners at Imperium Duelist. They make really high quality mats, including some of my own limited edition release stuff. And if you want to check out one of our past videos, click here on the right. As always, don't forget to hold on to your MST.TV, and I'll see you next time.